Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Something Something Podcast. My name is Eric Kasloff, your favorite podcaster's favorite podcaster. And with me, as always, is Larry Sands. How's it going, Larry? Everything is going great, Eric. Everything is going great. Uh, Before we get into it, I do have to share. You know, uh, we talked about this earlier. I, I, I think we don't we don't really hide who we are especially on this podcast because when you're in the hospital when things are you know happening to us it's part of the creative process right i was in who was in the hospital (laughs) exactly but but one thing that that i want to and as little as it is and it, it seems weird to even say that but um because nothing when you talk about faith and being a Christian and faith in God and and Jesus, there's nothing that's really small. And so um, I just want like this testimony. I want you to be a witness and really everybody else who's watching this and listening. Um, uh, So I lost my little headphone, right? Which is no big deal, but I've been looking for the last couple of days. And I was finally like, I stopped what I was doing and I was like, Lord, please help me find it, guide me to it. And I was walking through through our house and like this has been driving me crazy for the last couple of days. I'd look everywhere. Um, and as I was walking through the house, I just say, Lord, guide me and show me and open the door to let me find it. And I started to look <clears throat> in the bed and right in a little nook of our closet i just happened to look over and and guess what i found your headphones that's so awesome yeah and and it's it it's weird in a way to share that because obviously it's just a headphone but and and i think it's something that you said when we had talked about it earlier right about it matters to us it matters to god absolutely and and if you look at it in terms of like that and there's no there's nothing that is too big or there is nothing that is so definitely too small that the lord won't answer you um i had the same thing happen with me a few months ago with the hard drive right now i didn't remember it but there was really important stuff on there and I was ready to pay money to have it fixed. Yeah. But then out of nowhere, I just prayed, Lord, fix it. And it got fixed. So, Larry, there's something I want to talk about. <clears throat> now, me and you work in the film industry, yes. which obviously means we could care less about other people <laughs> unless it's going to help us, or unless it's going to help our careers. Right, right. But we've said several times, you would gladly shoot me in the face if it would help your career. And likewise, I would do the same. Wait, but what? I learned something. <laughs> okay, this is it's a little hard for me to say this word, so it feels like gravel in my mouth. Uh, other people matter. Right. Wow. Now, you know, you know, seriously, look, I found out that there are other people on this planet who care about helping other people. Right. It's the most insane thing in the world. And they do it without expecting anything in return. Right. I don't understand why somebody would ever do that. But you found people who do that. They help other people without expecting anything in return. Right. Right, right. And, and, and it's not just anybody, it's kids that really absolutely are looking for a way and a direction in life. And they have, I think, sometimes no clear path to what they're about to do and get into speaking about foster care, right, specifically. And so what I would like to do is introduce James and Issa. We had them on our live um, and uh, they were on with Grayson, Grayson Berry Productions talking about yeah. helping raise funds. Um, James and Issa, welcome to the, really this is a joint podcast because this is as much as 
as it is to an opportunity to find out more about you guys, but really introduce the fact that we're doing a, a, a podcast with you guys. We're helping mm -hmm. produce it and get it out. And not only just podcasts, but lives, Instagram lives, Facebook lives, and talking to people who I think matter. So mm -hmm. first of all, welcome to the Something Something podcast. Thank you guys for Thank having you. us. Thank you for having <laughs> us. You're welcome. You're welcome. Again. Now, <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. And and since since this is a proper introduction, um, mm -hmm. talk talk a little bit about what you guys are doing with your nonprofit, which is called It Takes a Village, mm -hmm. right? And and from what I understand, your your organization is a gap that bridges the end of foster care mm -hmm. with starting a new life and mm -hmm. figuring out how that life has to be figured out. Is that, is that kind of like mm -hmm. what it is? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So we take over um, when they believe they have no more resources left. Um, they have been in the system for X amount of time. It really doesn't matter how long. They could have been there two days or their entire childhood. And we receive them with open arms. Um, the only requirement they, we have is that they want a new life, that they're ready to start their life um, and build a future that is sustainable to them and that blesses them in the ability to, to contribute to the community. But yes, that's exactly what it is. Um, I don't know how many people are familiar with it, but many youth, when they age out of the system, because they're 18, if they're in a group home, or if they're living with a foster parent that is not necessarily interested in caring for older um, youth, uh, they, they're out on the streets. They essentially have to figure out being adults without the supervision, without the support, and um, that's where we step in. Mm. My goodness, my goodness. And, you know, you, you did mention that you're not sure how many people like know about what you guys do or particularly about foster care, mm -hmm. which which all of a sudden I'm sure foster care of people remember Annie, little orphan Annie. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but I think that's one of the things that I know initially when, when, you know, we first started talking to you guys about um, mm -hmm. doing a podcast together and getting the word out. And I, I think a lot of people don't understand it because I don't think you hear a lot about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so when you say that, that, kids in the then the youth system the foster care system that is literally a foster house mm -hmm. where it's a group of kids mm -hmm. that live together and how many people are in that is it a family setting can you explain yeah. some of this stuff to us <clears throat> so there's there's a variety of ways it can happen. There's um, agencies that are dedicated to placing youth that are in the foster care system. Foster care system is essentially their award of the state. Um, some things happen in their life where they've been neglected, abused, or family members are not in a position to care for them. So the state takes over. When this happens, they get placed either in a shelter or in an emergency location um, with a foster parent or organization that then waits until they're placed in a more permanent location. Um, and this could happen because they're going to be permanently removed from their original homes or giving parents an opportunity to get better to then be returned to their homes. So that's one of the very, it's a very complicated system. And then some of these agencies, their sole job is to find parents that are willing to take them in on a temporary basis until their permanent situation is resolved, whether that is going back home or being available for adoption. 
Um, and that, that system to navigate can be very complicated. There's group homes where there's a bunch of them living with workers, caseworkers, caretakers, and they're on rotation. And there's also families like me and my husband that could potentially take in a youth or a child and care for them on a temporary basis. Um, a lot of people do this with amazing heart and care. But unfortunately, like many things, when there's money and there's um, too much bureaucracy, um, children can either become numbers. Um, and I mean that just a number like, okay, I'm helping you and I'm just worried that you have a bed and a roof over your head, which is important, but that's not life in, in itself. Or it could be, I'm going to be good to you until it's financially detrimental to me, or I'll be this way because financially beneficial to me. And that's something that can further traumatize these kids. So mm. it's, it's a very complicated system. I we're blessed to have it because other countries don't. And one big example is India, um, orphan youth just end up at the brothel. Like literally the brothel takes them in. These women decide, you know, I'm just going to take the child in and, make them a slave they they either help clean around the brothel or eventually become people that participate in the brothel and unfortunately it happens sooner rather than later and um but we have something in the united states that many countries don't have we have a system dedicated to making sure children are taken care of is it perfect absolutely not um but we don't have to throw the baby with the bathwater. It's more about people like us and many other people out there coming together and filling in those gaps and making it better. Um, but it takes people. It takes not only money. Yeah, the government has the money to pay for this, but we, it requires good people to just be a part of it. Yeah, which which comes your which comes the name of your organization. It takes a village. It really does. Um, now you guys have had the organization for how long a little bit over a year we were founded in february of 2023 wow what what made you want to start your organization oh that's another long story <laughs> so i i just wanted to give back i my faith in god has me believing firmly that not everything that's given to me is not just for me to have but to bless others and glorify God with. So um, we came across a piece of property that I felt very blessed to have, and I just wanted to put it to good use and was on a search for something uh, bigger than myself. I didn't know quite how big that was going to be, but um, surfing the internet and on Facebook, uh, another person that's involved in foster care, Tina Capito, she runs Garden of Hope locally, and that's a foster home, emergency foster home for younger children, uh, mentioned, uh, commented on another realtor's post about tiny homes and how that would be such an amazing option for youth that have aged out of foster care with nowhere to go. And I was just instantly in my heart, I felt um, I needed to know more. So I invited her out to eat. And in the process, she explained to me the craziness of it. And I knew, I just knew from that moment forward, I did all the research I needed to do to start a nonprofit. I didn't know how I was gonna come together. I just knew that I had to do it and I had to find out how to help. And here we are. Wow, wow. And you know, I mean, looking back, was it, was it just that easy? And, <laughs> no. and, 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 and has, it, has it been, well, I was going to say, has it been everything that you have expected? But because because this is such a unique, and I think it is unique, because mm -hmm. I don't know of a lot of organizations, and I'm sure there's some out there, but you never, you never hear about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what What's the journey like, the year and and some change the year and a half journey been like for you and james through all this i would love for for james to share his part um it i've heard that a lot of people say that we make it look easy it is not easy um emotionally it takes a toll because 
there's there's we're helping which is very gratifying but there's so many people we can't help too and that's heartbreaking and um it, it takes a toll it's just staying focused i i went in this eyes wide open in the sense of i know we're not going to be able to save everybody and we actually don't save anybody we provide a place for people to be able to feel like they can flourish and take care of themselves but at the same time, when reality hits and things don't go exactly how you want them to, you're still affected by it, yeah. but we don't get a day off. You don't get a day off on nonprofit work. You don't get a day off because that's what we signed up for, for these kids to have somebody at the other side of the phone to call that will take that call, like a parent would, like I would for my children in college if they call me that they have a flat tire, that they're hungry and are tired of ramen noodles, whatever the case may be, I'm going to be that parent that will door dash them. Or if I'm close enough, we'll drive up and cook them a meal. So like they don't have that. And, and that's heartbreaking to me. So that means that when I formed this organization and a lot of people might be thinking, oh, this is for money. I wish um <laughs> this is i formed it with the understanding that it's a huge commitment i have to put the work where my mouth is and there's a lot of behind the scenes um emotional time financial time and time in general that i spend making sure that what we're promising these youth and what we're telling our donors yeah. is happening is happening and it's a very, very, very task, a uh, very, very heavy task to on um, to undertake. But we, I believe in this, and of course, my husband has his own perspective on this, and he's yeah. side by side with me from the beginning. So yes, yes, and actually, James, <clears throat> before you before you talk and before you let us know, I just put the link, the QR code, and obviously, if you're watching this on Instagram or on your phone, uh, you can't really click the link or can't uh, do the, uh, the QR code, but that's okay. Cause here's the, the website. Here's, here's the website. And I think if you visit the website and correct me if I'm wrong, that does the website have, it's a give butter, right? It does. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Um, uh, but James, talk to us a little about what's it been like for you through through everything. Well, in this past year, almost year and a half, um, we were able to establish a five hundred one c three nonprofit. Okay, and the key word here I want y'all to understand is nonprofit okay <laughs> so a lot of people have this idea of you know nonprofits uh, we're doing it we're in it for the money yeah. but i guarantee you if it were if we were in it for the money i, I know a few different ways to make a lot more money <laughs> way faster than what we're doing so we we really made this a, a labor of love because once I found out the statistics of what happens to the youth, once I met young ladies that have literally been pulled out of human trafficking, and then also being able to see them get accepted into college, getting to see pictures of them at their orientation, um, knowing that we're going to be taking a road trip with them to help them move into their dorm and then other things on top of that from other board members donating a lot of stuff and time and effort it's moments like that where it makes it all worth it there's a lot of heartbreak in between and there's a lot of stress and you know it's it's been one of those things where even in our marriage we experience it because we're co-laboring and a certain amount of stress comes with that yeah. And so it, it's, it's been helpful. It's kind of been like sharpening to us, but you know, it hurts when those, those mm -hmm. dull parts have to come off of you, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's been amazing because even in this year and a half, we have seen a tremendous impact in the youth that have 
kind of wanted to come alongside us in in their new life and and it's it's been amazing my goodness you know it's my interesting goodness. you're saying all this because as someone you know i joke around a lot because that's just my personality as someone who's worked in youth ministry or children's ministry for man like 20 years weird because i'm only 24 despite mm. what my birth certificate says mm. I really I feel born, so yeah. <laughs> I really feel especially now there is a war on our young people. You know, especially the ones in foster care who are going through that, but overall our nation has kind of stopped caring unless a tragedy happens. Mm -hmm. And you know, we all care for a week. Mm -hmm. that we go back to our daily lives. And it's just so encouraging to see what you all are doing for the youths um, right now and just hearing the testimonies. So how could like an average person who wants to help, is it going to the Give Butter? Is that the way someone could help with the organization? There are so many ways to help. Of course, financial contributions are important. Um, Fundraising is how we raise all our money. Even though we have an opportunity to pursue contracts and um, with foster agencies, it's not really what we prioritize. We're really wanting to help the youth that nobody can help. And, um, and there's requirements at times from agencies and government agencies to fund you that exclude kids we've already helped. That means if we were receiving these funds, we wouldn't have been able to help the girls that we helped. And um, so we, we're we open to taking care of youth that have those benefits, of course, but we're also not wanting to exclude those that don't. And fundraising is how we do it. Now, I understand economy, the economy is not the greatest. Not everybody can contribute the same amount of money. A dollar can go a long way. A hundred people giving a dollar is, a hundred dollars, a thousand people giving a dollar. I even have a dollar campaign out on social media, literally a dollar. It works. And if I have 3000 friends on Facebook and they give a dollar, that's $3,000. Right. And, um, right. that's one way that's important. I'm not going to deny that funds is what we need to build the community that would help us keep them stable and reduce costs. Right now we're renting apartments and paying rent where we could own these these pieces of property as an organization, reduce the overhead so that we can help more youth. Um, the other way that people can help is sharing. We have a very, 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 very active social media platform and we keep people informed. I am constantly pouring time and information down those channels. So if you just share it, the right person with the right funds and the right time can do it. That's another way. Share what we're saying. Share what we're doing. Tell people. Ask other people to help. Do a call to action. The other way people can help is volunteering if they're in the area and coming to our events and be, where we're fundraising and being able to donate their time their time time is money we say that all the time so it literally is and we spend a lot of hours of our day making things uh, come together so the more people that work the hours get divided between more people and we can accomplish more with less time and and also you get that satisfaction of seeing peeking behind the curtain you get to see who we really are what we're really about by volunteering because i promise you both him and i will be in the trenches sweating and volunteering with you. We don't just go on social media to ask for money. We don't just show up to podcasts. We don't just go to news interviews. We're out there sweating outside, putting barricades, taking money, and, you know, doing all the things volunteers do, cleaning up. And because this is this is what we believe in. And, um, and you'll get to see us and see our heart for yourself. The other way is um, we're a little bit more strict on that, but we want mentors. We want other people that want to work one-on-one -on -one with these youth. Again, we're very strict on that. So um, there's reasons for that. Um, it requires a certain type of personality. We have to be able to love these kids through their mistakes. 
And um, I don't think everybody's equipped to see through that because we have our own way of functioning. And um, we also have to be able to take in the load, the emotional load that it requires to hear the stories for the, from these youth themselves. So we do kind of go through an interview process and we want people to be prepared to understand that there's, there's ways to interact and, and not lecture and right. not condemn and not, um, not kind of like judge them, but also speak life positivity right. and right. encourage them and correct them. But there's a way to do that. And um, yeah. I'm very, I'm overzealous about that. Um, and I'm not apologetic about it. So yes, but we do need people to sign up for mentorships. Um, what else? What other ways can people so get involved? I, we, I believe in the three T's, time, talent, and treasure. She pretty much spoke on all of those. The, another thing is we are very innovative when it comes to fundraising. So we have a chicken race yeah. maybe once or twice a year. We have we've done uh, private screenings of movies. Uh, we do a battle of the food trucks. We we do very unique things. We're going to have a big uh, cornhole tournament at this next one. So if you have some form of talent or idea for a fundraiser and you can uh, come meet us and we can help launch it off the ground and, and you kind of run with it, yeah. we're open to stuff like that, too. But the last thing is another T. It's a thought. If if I could just get you to meditate on this thought for a second. Imagine you're in a house. You walk into a room you think is empty, but in that room you find a fire and, it, and it's small, you know. But instead of uh, doing what it takes to quench that fire, you close the door and you 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 turn a blind eye because maybe you think you can't. Put the fire out mm -hmm. and you close that door and you you continue throughout your day if if you think about the nature of a fire we all know what's going to happen if you leave that fire uh, yeah. uh, burning so that's what's happening with these youth there's the statistics say that the young women who who age out and end up on the streets it's like 70 something percent will encounter uh human trafficking but I can tell you 100% of the young ladies we've helped and have gone through our park program were victims or potential victims getting groomed for human trafficking. And, and a lot of people think that this is in the movies. It's, it's kind of not in our neighborhood. It's not in our backyard. It's not even in our city because that's, that's how I used to think. But this is happening every single day with with youth that are are on the streets and most of them are aging out of the foster care system so i just want you to think that that's that's just one aspect of the fire that's burning and if you meditate on that and if something is put onto your heart to help whether it's help us or whether it's to start this up wherever you're at you can reach out and we we don't get keep we want to build this up wherever people want to do start. this mm -hmm. So that way the, the the youth get that the hand up that they need, not a hand out, but a hand up. Right. right. Exactly. Right. It sounds like what you all are doing is that old, you know, saying if you teach a man to if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, but you're teaching these young people to fish. And mm -hmm. you know, we've all seen movies where I'm sure I'm sure I hope that most foster care people are good hearted people, but we all know that bad people don't outright tell you they're bad. So you guys, you, what everyone listening to this, you have a chance to partner up with everyone here to help these kids who have never had anyone believe in them. Mm -hmm. And all it really takes to change someone's life is one person believing in them, even if it's just for a couple hours or hopefully a couple years, but you can impact someone by joining up with New Life Village. And it's an awesome opportunity. And, you know, I really feel blessed to be part of this with all of you, even though, you know, I'm thousands of miles on the other side of the country were able to do this to help yeah. people. And um, I, there's so much I want to say, but it keeps like, stepping out of my mind. Um, 
tell us some if you can some more of the stories you've had from people you call because what you talked about you know taking these kids to come from bad situations to college i mean what does that do for you knowing that you know if it wasn't for god bringing you to that person at that time Mm -hmm. something awful would have happened. Yeah. And um, it's very interesting that you say that because it's like we go in with that goal and and even in the process of helping this young lady and another young lady um, accomplish something amazing, like going to college, joining the military, uh, knowing that that's what they want to pursue in life, I hadn't really thought about what would have happened to them if we hadn't decided to start this organization a year ago, a little bit over a year ago, until recently, the news on in the news interview was interviewing one of our young ladies, and she said that, and it it just kind of like brought it to reality. I am the type of person I like my fight or flight. I'm when I'm on fight mode, I am just accomplishing the mission, you know. And it took me aback to really absorb the fact that that one decision a year ago, even though I'm working towards these other things that it feels like I haven't accomplished, mission accomplished because this person felt safe. Like she was able to say that she felt she didn't think she would be alive if it weren't for us. That's huge. Like whether somebody showed up the date after or not, we don't know that. What we did know is that we showed up, that we said yes. And and imagine how many more lives can be changed with another year. This is, we've touched about seven lives directly in a positive way, 11 altogether. Um, some obviously fall through the cracks. They make other choices because they're adults and they're developing. But this, if I were to give up or say no, how many more could end up in a situation where we're not there for them? And that's huge to me. That's I, I walked in there saying, if only one life can be changed, that's that's worth it to me. And the fact that we were able we're able to say that in one year is amazing for not one life, but at, at least that we know of at least two people, and directly their lives completely changed. And we have a potential another young man coming in soon that I have so much belief that his life is going to turn around for the better mm -hmm. um, because he has a drive. They're just wanting somebody to believe in them. This is all it is. They're wanting somebody to give them a shot, to give them a roof over their head and the stability to know that while I'm figuring these things out, while I'm growing up to be an adult, where I'm trying to figure out I, I belong somewhere. I have an opportunity to in a life. There's a set of people that care for me and all they want me is to succeed. They don't want anything else from me, but for me to have a new life. And that's what we're about. What's crazy is you guys, um, this is for all of our, you know, filmmakers and movie audience. You guys are kind of like a combination of George Bailey and Clarence mm -hmm. to these people. You know, you're able by touching one person's life, Mm -hmm. You're touching so many other people's lives. Like the kids you help, someone's going to hear their story yeah. and it's just going to completely change them. And then another person just by this little bit of stuff you're doing right now. And because you guys were willing to take a scary leap, you know, this yeah. I'm sure just wasn't an easy decision, you know, like, hey, you know what, let's do this. I'm sure there was yeah. lots of prayer and thought and discussion that went into this, but mm -hmm. the fact that you took the leap means so much. And then it's going to mean, oh, keep this, this doesn't stop with the two of you, you know, it's going to keep going for yeah. generations and generations. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, We're hoping to inspire these youth to a level that when they make it, when they get to that place, which I believe is limitless for them, that they turn around and give back. Not to us, but to the community, that they decide, you know what? Maybe I can do this for others, mm. knowing what I know, mm. and I can make it better because of what I know. And um, another way, I know you guys asked about how people can get involved. So yeah, there's, of yeah. course, supporting us. 
But ideally, if people are stepping in when they're younger, we're not even necessary. You know, so like if you are in your community and you feel you have a heart for taking care of youth, taking care of foster foster youth, get plugged in. You can reach out to us if you're out of town. We can find an agency near you that might work that can help you get plugged in. We can help you get started where you're at. Um, obviously, know what your talent is and your gift is. If you believe you could just fundraise for an organization, do that because being with the youth requires a specific commitment and a specific um, temperament because um, we can do more harm sometimes, even with the best intentions. So if you believe like, yeah, I believe wholeheartedly in this, um, but I don't know if emotionally I can handle it, I'm going to just find ways to do it. In fundraising, I have a group of people, they're, they're fundraising on their own on our behalf. And that's amazing too. They're doing a fun event for real estate at the water park and they're going to raffle items and everything that's sold, uh-huh. that's, they're going to give it to us. And all they're doing is reaching out to me, asking questions and how I can help them. I'm willing to do that for anybody that saves uh-huh. us so much time because it's an event that our organization benefits from, but we just provide information and support in that time. I can spend it driving eight hours to college orientation instead of on the phone trying to raise funds. So the more people that get involved in those aspects and do it their own way and their own flavor with their own gifts and talents, we're for it. It's, I think it's beautiful. Here's an, another interesting thought that I don't think a lot of nonprofits necessarily share is one of our goals is to work New Life Village to the point where it's obsolete. So it might not make sense at first, but back to the analogy of that fire, the immediate need is to put that fire out. And that's what we're working on. But our goal is to address what caused the fire in the first place, whether it's faulty uh, electrical system or whatever the case may be. So we want to inspire the community to actually be that village again to where it's not a situation where we don't care until that fire is raging. It's a fact of let's get back to those two commandments. Let's get back to loving our neighbors as we love ourselves, And let's find these youth that don't have the same opportunities who maybe who some of these people are just orphans. Some of them, their parents just died and, you know, their lives are completely transformed by that. And so if if we can get to the point where there is no youth aging out of foster care and ending up on the streets, that's our ultimate goal mm-hmm. to where New Life Village is now obsolete because from the base level up, there's a village around them. Correct. Um, and it, it, it's the village that starts at a very young age. Um, the other aspect of that as well is when we are, when we're doing this as community, um, we're inspiring and educating other people to prevent this. It creates, I feel like, a sense of awareness because we were told very early on in our research that everybody's a phone call away from ending up in foster care or involved somewhere in the foster system with CPS. It's literally a phone call away. The one call, one angry neighbor, one relative that's vindictive could end up your, your, your child in foster care, even if it's temporary while things get sorted out and investigated. But guess what? Three days in foster care, one night in foster care costs and could potentially cost a youth their innocence and end up in a very bad situation trying to protect them from a potentially bad situation and that happens every day in this country um so we need (laughs) more good people with the right heart involved um the other thing is and this is goes back to the analogy of our goal is to not be needed right to not be necessary we are right now in a big way it's like hurt people hurt people right People that end up in foster care hurt by this become generationally that. Right. We have so many youth in the system that are third generation, fourth generation foster care. That means they they were in foster care. Their children will now be in foster care. 
and so on and so forth. And we don't have further generations because the system is not old enough to go that far back. But it's as for as long as it's existed, we have descendants of those kids ending up in the same system at one point or another. Some from the gate, some like there's pregnant youth in there that are 13, 14 because they were abused. They're pregnant. Their kids get removed because they're in a foster situation where they can't be with their babies. So now this baby's in another foster home. And then by the time that youth ages out, she might not have the resources to claim her baby because now she's an adult. But do you have a home? Do you have a job? Do you have steady income? Because you can't get your child back until you have your life together. But you've been in government care this whole time. And it creates this cycle that is unbreakable unless somebody steps in and acts differently doesn't behave like the system actually that is absolutely where you two come in yeah and and that because i because that cycle it's so i was sitting here thinking oh my god how do you how do you stop how do you prevent i mean preventing is is one thing but how do you break that cycle and really I'm getting chills. Sorry. It it's you guys. It's it's you. It's your board members that believe in you. It's the people who are listening to this and watching this. Yeah. Those are the people that will make a difference. And it kind of blows my mind. It's like everybody's got a friend. And if somebody and if if you look at all the the Instagram and the Facebook friends and the TikTok friends. If they just donate one dollar a month, mm -hmm. one dollar, mm -hmm. I can do a dollar. Mm -hmm. That, that, when you break it down like that, because I think you kind of have to. Yeah. You know, when you're in a situation and an organization like you guys, it's good to think ahead, but you have to think the here and now, mm -hmm. and. And to be able to do both mm -hmm. is absolutely amazing. And to do, to have the hearts that you guys have, it, <coughs> it's, uh, it gives, it gives me hope mm -hmm. that, that there, there are organizations, you guys, that, mm -hmm step up and you don't I don't want to say you don't think about the consequences but you can't worry about what you guys are going through because you have all these other kids mm -hmm. that you have and they depend on you yeah, yeah that everybody my god my god the email is right there mm -hmm. admin yeah. at newlifevillagectx.org I don't care if you're listening. I'm sure the links will be in the description of our audio platform and you're watching this on YouTube, on Instagram. Do not hesitate to reach out and create, help create. That's, that's, all, you, that's all you have to do. It's, it's James, it's like what you said. You meditate it and you let that spark yeah. become a fire. And and you know so much of everything that i've done so far in my life i've just said yes to and seeing where it takes me and i know who's in control yeah. and sometimes it doesn't feel good sometimes you got to go through it but on the other side you're able to look back and go yes mm -hmm. i understand what i have to go through so um i really <laughs> talk about because you mentioned mentorship mm -hmm. what what kind of mentors are you looking for right here and right now that somebody could be like hey i can do that i can do that but mm -hmm. <laughs> is it specific mm -hmm. do you have specific things that you need mentors for mm -hmm. 
Yes, absolutely. So finances are a big one. And we've had um, lenders step in and do some financial classes. Um, it could be as easy as a couple of sessions where you teach them how to balance a checkbook. I mean, we don't really do that anymore, but you know, a bank account and explain credit to them, explain how it can affect you in the future, how to build credit, um, what, how to budget. It's as simple as money in and money out. What are priorities? Because they're young. And when they start working, you know, they think a cell phone. Remember, they lived in lack. They lived in these organizations where they had basic needs met and that was it. So they didn't experience extra stuff, right? Yeah. That my kids experienced, right? So they're, they're going to prioritize getting the most expensive iPhone and right. getting the ear pods and kind of like teaching them that stuff is cool and you can get it, but you should budget for your meals. You should budget for your transportation. What are your long-term goals, your short-term goals? And yes, it starts very technical, but we want people to have heart behind it. So like live it out with them, you know? Um, as some, some of the kids we've been blessed, the ones we've had so far do have basic living skills, but some of the youth come with no living skills. They don't know how to boil an egg. They wow. don't know how to do laundry because they've been in a group shelter where things are done for them, you know, or there's like people assigned to certain things uh, to keep order in this, in the, in the system. So they don't know how to do any of those things for themselves. A lot of them have a very hard time being alone. And we remember we're preparing them for independent living. So they have these cabins when they spend, you know, their nights alone. So somebody to be able to talk to that's healthy and safe that is not necessarily going to lure them into booty calls or any inappropriate behavior because they're lonely. They tend to default into anybody that pays them attention. So just people available to answer basic questions, like how do you boil rice? Like I've answered that via text, you know, like, wow. um, and, and, and people that if they have a skill in particular, and we have a youth that we know wants to be an artist, and we have somebody that is a successful artist or a gallery holder or something, they want to step in and teach them how to do that process. If they are interested in nursing and we have a nurse that wants to tell them about all the options that they can have while they're nursing and give them even a tour of their job site. That's the kind of stuff we need. <clears throat> we did have a young lady that it took her eight months to figure out what she wanted to do. And that's fine. But we gave her all these different options and let her explore what she wanted to do. Not everybody wants to go to college. Not everybody benefits from college because they might want to do something outside of that. And college is just time spent, you know? Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Um, uh, that is very, that's eye opening that, that you say, because, you know, when you, when you live in these homes, I don't know if it, it hasn't occurred to me until just when you said it is, they don't, they have everything kind of taken care of them or taken care of it for them. Mm -hmm. And so absolutely when they go on their own, mm -hmm. they have no idea mm -hmm. what, what is going on. And absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I tell you what, I got a lot of stuff mm -hmm. going through my mind right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I think, I think one of the great things that, that we can do with with it takes a village podcast mm -hmm. is i would love to be able to to do a couple things talk to the board members because i think it's important for for people out there on the outside looking in mm -hmm. i think it's important for people to understand not only the organization but the people that help the organization um and and how they help donate and and how they help the organization so i think that's one thing i would love to be able to talk to um uh foster foster organizations that that we can ask questions to because again mm -hmm. when people don't know they don't know mm -hmm. but it's but it's different now yeah because when they know and when they know what goes on, I think then, then we can absolutely have people understand what, what these kids are up against, what your organization is up against, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, <coughs> and I don't, I don't mean that in a bad way at all. Um, I wouldn't even mind talking to uh, some of our uh, government officials about mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Um, because I think, I think everybody is accountable for something, but if you don't hold anybody, accountable, <coughs> then it just, becomes, <coughs> then it just becomes, eh, somebody else will do it. Somebody else will take care of it. And we are actually looking and talking to two people that are absolutely stepping up and yeah. taking care of it and doing mm -hmm. something about it. So I can't wait to do this um, before or as we begin to wrap up, is there anything else, um, James and Issa, that you want somebody to think about, to know about? Yes, that you absolutely can make a difference and your calling and whatever's tugging at your heart is gonna be different than what I've been called to do, that what James is called to do, that what you guys have been called to do, but it definitely matters. If you've been led and feel led to do something or whether it's our organization or somewhere in the system to help the crises, what's going on, do it. Don't know how to start, reach out. I had to reach out before I started and find out from people that were doing it. And then I followed the path that was what I still believe what God is calling me to do specific path. But I had to reach out to the people that knew I had to learn from the people that have been doing it and then decide how I wanted to do what I'm doing. Um, I'm open for questions. And how people started. We, we want the village. The village means everybody has something different to contribute. Some of us double on the work that we do because it's necessary and, multiple levels. Um, also, if you just want to know more, reach out, email us, send us a message on, on our uh, webpage. Um, just, just really ask and get involved and share, share it that you might not feel moved to do anything yourself. That's fine. There might be a different journey for you somewhere else. Share it. There's somebody in your friends group. I guarantee you that is aching to do something that can do something and we want them involved my goodness um i i tell you this is why i think you need like a bigger platform to mm -hmm. talk there's so many things to talk about there's so mm -hmm. many things that that we can only hit in a certain amount of time and and i i know that that when you said like artists and things, I already have like people in mind that I could reach out to. And by the way, how many, how many like kids, can we call them kids or the you? I call them kids yeah. all the time. Okay. They're adults though, <laughs> but they're my kids. They, they're okay. my kids and they will forever be my kids. I have like this hope and expectation for them to grow old and wise. And I, while I'm old and wise, <laughs> hopefully, um, they will come and just talk to me, Miss Issa, and they'll still be my kids. Um, they're in many ways, just like us when we were 18, we thought we were grown, but we were full of uncertainty and confusion. Most of us, or a lot of us were blessed to have a supportive family, others were not. And there's trauma that they carry just like everybody. So they're, they're, they're kids. They're kids yeah. trying to figure out who they are. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many, how many kids right now um, do you have, or do you help? So one of them just left for the military. We still consider her our kid, you know, she That's can cool. reach out. Then we have another one heading for college. She's with us actively living in one of our residences. And then we have a young man that's already been essentially accepted and admitted. He's graduating from a program that will allow him to be a security guard for now, you know, and just get started. And he's going to be moving in in August. Wow. He actually graduates this Friday. He just next texted Friday. next Friday. Wow. So, um, and then we're kind of interviewing another young lady that he referred us to referred um, to us. We're expecting another young lady in November. Wow. 
Wow, wow, wow. We would take more, but we only like we're we have to build the community and we don't have that built. So that we have to work with the funds that we have and being able to sustain the bills to pay for these outside locations yeah. that we don't disclose um so that to keep them safe, but that's really where we're at. If we we had more places, we would have more kids. If if maybe maybe I shouldn't ask this, but I think I'm going to anyway because I think in this day and age, if you don't ask for it, I don't think, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think people mm -hmm. will do it. Um, <clears throat> and I am going to be very bold and I hope I'm not overstepping my boundaries, but how much money mm -hmm. do you guys need by the end of this year? Actually, by the end of the month, how, <laughs> how, much, <laughs> monthly, how much monthly do you guys need monthly? You definitely got me because that is my least favorite thing in the whole wide world but you're right you i love the results we get when we get the funding that we need for certain uh goals but i i hate like putting money behind it because it's people i literally see people i see the goal but the reality is six money. So I'll break it down this way. Um, for us to get started with the 12 cabins that we plan on building on the two acres and the kitchen and the laundry facilities and all the things that it's like a self um, sustained community, we need a septic tank. That septic tank is around $40,000 to get completed. So we need to start there. Let's just say that. That's just the basic thing to start the community. Our monthly expenses are pretty low because none of us are collecting a salary. Not wow. a single one of us. We are literally, I have been doing this for over a year for free mm -hmm. and um, taking time out of my income producing job to do this. Mm -hmm. And I have absolutely no regrets, but my pockets do. Mm. So, <laughs> so I'm just going to be honest. So I, I say this honestly, we we every penny we spend is towards the efforts of what we're doing the money that's spent is either to pay for a goal or to fundraise you know to like continue the fundraising machine yeah. um so every month right now our whole even taking care of kids with the with the properties that we're paying for technology are below three thousand dollars a month so we but that's going to grow if we don't build this community because then that means we have to rent more apartments and do more things that cost money, more money than us owning the properties. So um, overall, our full budget to build the community, everything, we're talking landscaping, all the things, um, that it's about $500,000. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and obviously, I mean, you know, somebody's going to listen to that and go, Oh my God. Oh, Oh, I get it. And I, I, along with you, mm -hmm. I think, I think that's the toughest thing to do mm -hmm. is like when you're, when you're an organization, but it, even more so like when you work for yourself and you talk yeah. to people about your services and the things that you offer, I think, I think that's one of the hardest things to do um, next to cold calling. Yeah. Well, I'm going to put it in perspective as a realtor. I think the last average national average for a home was around 450,000 for the entire nation. Mind you, this is including Missouri where you can buy a house for $90,000. <laughs> so like the national average is about 450 for a family of four, yeah. uh, just a household. Um, for th about that same amount of money, we can house 24 people. Wow. and provide all these services. So it sounds like a lot of money, but if you think about it, we're providing a home, like a home with everything they need for 12 people at a, um, 24 people at a time. Wow. Um, and I that could be countless throughout the year. I want to, so. I want to share this. So y'all know our heart too. We're building this like a resort mm -hmm. because it's not their last resort. Right. Do you understand? It's a, we want them to come in automatically in a new state of living yeah. than they lived in previously. Right. So right. it's not over the top. It's not extravagant, but it's going to be nice. Yeah. If you have yeah. the graphics, you can share them mm -hmm. of what we plan on building. This is one, one thing I said from the gate, even when we're designing them, I want this to be a place I would vacation in. I want this home to be a place where if I go to the Caribbean, it looks like a villa that I would mm -hmm. stay in. 
Yeah. And not because that's what I could afford, because that's what I would choose. Right. And I want them to feel that the second they walk in through those gates, that they're not just, you know, be happy with the fact that you have a roof and food on the plate, which is, yeah, of course we want gratitude. It's one of our seven core values, right. but we also want them to know they were thought of, they were prayed for, and that we honestly believe they deserve all the good things, regardless yeah. of where they are circumstantially in that moment, because that's, that's God, that's grace, that's Jesus. <laughs> he died for us where we were. He gave everything the best of him. Wow. Oh, wow. 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 Well, I can tell you, we're going to go on this journey. <clears throat> with you, and I, I, I know, and I think that there's a lot of stuff to come. And I think that Eric and I are going to do everything we can possibly yeah. to help you. To help you. I, I don't even know what to do yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's just like I said. And it's just like. I mean, you got us on the news. <laughs> You're you done a lot, lot already. <laughs> You're done a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think I've updated you, but we've gotten a lot of people reaching out um, through our website because of that uh, mm -hmm. news report. Really? Yes, including the Department of Family and Protective Services, which we've already met with them. But, you know, there's people in charge of different regions. So I've had two different regions reach out to me. Um, and this is important, too, because, yes, we're asking about money and people helping. But my, one of my biggest hopes is that people in need see this and know they can come to us, that we're an option. There's kids watching out there, and these agencies have reached out to send us youth. So we need this or We need this built. Mm -hmm. They're reaching out to send us kids. So we, we want to say yes. People who, who, who dig septic tanks and do all this stuff, why, why, why can't you just step up and just say, you know what? Because because of the two of you and because of what I believe and you guys are doing, it's done. Ah, Amen. Oh God. Yeah. This is this is gonna be a journey. This is gonna be an emotional journey, I think. Yeah. It's to be already, fair and to give credit. Somebody's where been credit cutting is. onions in this podcast yeah. all the whole time. Uh, to be fair. <laughs> To give credit where credit is due, we have had an amazing person step up and do something similar. He doesn't build septic tanks, but he essentially has donated an entire building to New Life Village to utilize to raise funds as a headquarters, as an office for us to alleviate, you know, us having to travel between our personal like work offices and make it a hub where we can raise funds in all the creative ways we want to so that people can come ask us questions. The youth can find jobs if they're still at a skill level where they need a little extra work before they can get on the workforce. They can work there, earn an income, be mentored there. We can um, receive donations, not just monetary, but uh, items there. And that's a huge blessing. Not only is he giving us that building to utilize, he is fronting all of the renovation costs and he's doing an amazing job colors finishes everything we have asked for he has um set out to do and is doing it out of just the kindness of his heart you know when you make it look easy and you make it sound easy people are looking around and going hmm mm -hmm. i think i can do that and, yeah. and it's it it sounds so easy but when you have somebody that believes in you mm -hmm and just says yes mm -hmm. excellent things can happen mm -hmm. and just like you're building there is somebody that's going to listen to this watch this and feel it mm -hmm. and and they will contact you and actually mm -hmm. right now to reach out to the, the email mm -hmm. please contact james and isa and just say hey i can do this I know how to do X, Y, Z. What can I do? Mm -hmm. And let them guide you. They yeah. know exactly. Yeah. All you got to do is just an idea of it. This is the thing too. It's very, very simple. We we just ask if you could do what you can with what you got right where you're at. It's as simple as that. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. 
I love that. And I think, I think there's absolutely going to be more to come. And I think we should just let it hang out. Yeah. I think we just need to ask for, I say we, I, <laughs> I, I think because I feel, I feel now being adopted by you guys <laughs> in, a, in a good way. It's just trying to figure out everything that we can do. You can also buy a shirt. Yes, <laughs> yeah, right. like this is the this iteration is build the village. <laughs> oh man. Okay, where do you do that? Where can we get that? Shirt? Um, you guys can order them through the email. Say I want to buy a t-shirt, and what we can just we can ship them to you. They're twenty five dollars, but all the after the expenses of making the shirt, everything goes to New Life Village. Okay, I'm gonna buy one. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll. I'll I'll talk to you guys after. And we have a hashtag, and you can do social media, tag us, and uh, we do We the Village Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. So hashtag We the Village Wednesdays, and you take a selfie with your shirt. We did it last year, and it was a great campaign. Mm -hmm. And that's just awareness, yeah. I love it. I love it. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. This is going to be great. Uh, I'm yes. going to get a shirt. I will yes. bend <laughs> you right now. Um, but... Um, Thank you guys. Thank you for just saying yes to Eric and I, and actually letting us be a part of your world. Yeah. yeah Cause I mean, this whole helping uh, other people, it's <laughs> that other people matter, not just me. Uh, right. It's going to become easier and easier to say, Eric, yeah. I'm not, I mean, it's always about other people. <laughs> I really hope and so. I'm going to rub off on you and it's going to be okay. <laughs> We got to make sure you say it five times a day. Yeah, it's like <laughs> right when you wake it's up. It's like that Vicks vapor right. rub, you know. I grew up on that, so I'm just gonna be the balm to other people. <laughs> <laughs> I love well, it. Thank you, guys. You want me to close this out, guys? Yes, Larry. James yes. and Lisa, thank you so much again. In all seriousness, for letting us be part of this with you, and you know, I feel that we are part of the team. And, you know, you can also, not just by helping financially and the other ways, share this podcast with people that you know, because you could touch that one person and that's all that matters. Yeah. Well, I think I have, I know how we're going to end the show each and every week. Remember, everybody, support our children. 